The set you're about to see is a very cookie cutter example of exactly how a typical night game set goes down. This is a girl with a couple of her friends. I actually ended up opening up her friend first and I didn't even see her. And then I switched targets because I, I thought this girl was cuter uh, and carried it through. And this is a set where from the beginning she liked me, but just the fact that she likes you is not enough. So many guys, intermediate guys especially, will get girls into them and then they'll mess it up somewhere along the way. In order to carry through attraction to an actual result, an actual pull, there's a lot of steps there, there's a lot of things you can mess up, and there's a lot of sort of like I's you have to dot and T's you have to cross. So think of this as like a treatise on exactly how to go about that typical standard pull without fucking it up. Hey, don't turn around, don't turn around, don't turn around. I don't wanna know what you look like. I like your dress and I like your fashion. I want to get to know you before I see you. Who are you? Your friend's feisty too. Who are you? What's your name? What? You're super cute. Mwah. How do you guys all know each other? Well, everybody. I mean, that's your friend too, right? Yeah. So you, you don't know him? You don't know her? You don't know her? No, I know these. I know these guys. I know, I know. I know you don't know the guys. I can tell. I remember Okay, so here's where I ended up switching targets. I had addressed the other girl earlier, so I said your friend is feisty over there, and I pointed at her. So I'd already sort of acknowledged her and she was part of the set, but I hadn't switched over yet. And in a way, I was already doing really well with the girl that I opened, but in a way, I actually, by switching it, made things easier because it's not try hard. If you have to open, then something happened, right? But the girl wants sex to just happen. She wants it to be just one thing led to another. And the fact that I didn't open her, helped tremendously. Now, the thing that made that possible though, is that I hadn't already expressed a ton of intent with the friend. <clears throat> if I'd already made like strong commitments to the friend, if I'd already been a lot, very, very man to woman, if I'd already started using the word we a lot and creating this sort of like bubble of love sort of concept, then the switch would have been much harder. But because it was early on in the set, I was very much able to make the switch. I'm the worst with names, I remember yours. I didn't hear your name ever. I never told her your name. Really? I'm Todd, nice to meet you. Todd, okay. Todd, nice to meet you. Am I very good friend? Oh yes, I'm wow. Are you like a champion handshake? Are you as much trouble as I think you are? Ever since I saw your face, I was like, that girl is going to be bad for me. <laughs> she looks very cute, but she looks like the girl that would like sneak up on me and break my heart. Let me see. How tall are you? Mm. That's hot. You would be the second shortest girl I ever had a crush on. Who was the first? Just 4'8". Four 4'8"? Eight. Four eight. Wow. I know. She was actually, this is going to sound weird, good and bad at the same time, okay? Okay. So, 4'8 <laughs> is like legally like a midget, right? But she was like a famous one. Like she famously played. These Vegas girls, they like, you know, they're boring in their real life and they come to Vegas and let loose. Uh -huh. You actually know how to party in real life. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. I can dance anywhere. Anywhere. I can have fun anywhere. Really? What's life otherwise, you know? Do you have any idea how cute you are? I'm no. not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Yes, you Gina, are. No, 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 do you know Eskimo kisses? Yeah. Just the nose, no lips, okay? No lips. <laughs> so we just saw a few things there. First of all, qualification. Notice how I'm telling her reasons why I actually like her that are specific to her. And then you saw the invisible escalation. You saw me like go for an escalation in a way that she actually rejects it. And she actually kind of in the moment knows that she did, but it was light enough that plausibly I never tried. And I'm able to back off, do something else, pull away first. And so instead of the frame being, I tried for an escalation and didn't get it within 30 seconds, the frame is actually, I could have escalated more and I didn't go through with it. So instead of killing the sexual tension with escalation, I'm increasing the sexual tension with escalation. 
very, very, very powerful, right? And every single thing I do, I'm just thinking, how do I increase her um, qualification? How do I increase her investment? And how do I increase the sexual attention? Those are the three things I'm constantly trying to ramp up with everything I do. I like the look you just gave me, though. <laughs> Why? What was it? Turned on and terrified. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so you know her, because the man, you know her from where? From the Well, you're better groomed than I am. Then. They take care of me. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. You should get a man to take care of you. <laughs> Someday. Someday. Don't give me that look. <laughs> okay. Can I be really honest with you? Yeah. Okay, I enjoy you. Yeah. I don't want anything to happen tonight because I'm very shy. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I think that. Uh, I think you're really a shy person. <laughs> not shy, shy, but like, <laughs> I can be shy with girls sometimes, especially like. If I like a girl a little bit, I can be shy. Okay. So I don't think that's happened between us, like, really. But okay. I would love to banter with you, hang out with you. We can even fool around a little bit, but that's as far as it can go. Okay. And even that, even that I'm not sure about. Okay. But I do like you. I think you're cute. Okay. You think I'm cute? I do think you're cute. I'm unsure of you. You're not sure about I'm me? I'm unsure. I think you're cute, but I'm unsure of you. Oh, as a person? Yeah. Oh, that's fine. But I do basically... No, I seem charming at first, I'm but it fades quickly. <laughs> it goes away. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just like tonight I've had four people like try like kiss me, like not even give me a chance. So it's been a little like you know what I mean? Enough accidental kisses for one night. It's just it's, yeah, exactly. It's just been I a little I promise you number one, I'm not gonna kiss you yet because <laughs> I don't know you. And I promise you two, if I kiss you, it will be when you already want it. Okay, okay. By the time I kiss you, you'll already want it for ten minutes or so at least. Okay, I okay, that's good. Deal? That's good, that's good. Yes. Yes. But probably, <laughs> to be honest, no kissing in our relationship. I'm very shy, okay? <laughs> you believe me, right? I do. I do. Do you? No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought we had a special. <laughs> it's five minutes special. I think I told you. I told you. I don't know if I told you or your friend. I've never lasted more than five minutes with a girl anyway, so it's okay. <laughs> and I'm hung like this. Like a little Asian man. Really tiny. That's not good. I have to I have to go in circles to hit a wall. That's not good. So notice the combination of massive amounts of disqualifying, like not necessarily dis disqualifying her a little bit, but also disqualifying myself. Just all kinds of this can't happen type of stuff, right? And so when you disqualify, you take the pressure off of the interaction. You take the pressure off of whatever's gonna come next. Right? Because if, if there's no possibility of a future, you don't have to worry about consequences. So that's there. But at the same time, notice how man to woman it is, how like overtly, ridiculously sexual it is. So it's this weird combination. It's like a, it's like a kind of um, uh, a push-pull in themes almost, which is on one hand, the theme is very sexual. On the other hand, the theme is like massive disqualification. So instead of like, I like you, but I hate you, it's like we have this very sexual interaction, but it can't go anywhere. Right, so it's like a, a plot line push pull, or like a, a push pull in terms of like her expectations. Uh, I find this very, very, very powerful. Once a girl likes you quite a bit, you have very piercing eyes. Thank you. Oh, huh? thank you. Don't thank me. Thank your parents. <laughs> They're kind of big. I'm kind of big. My eyes are kind of big. I told you I'm tiny. <laughs> I'm Asian. And I love your hair too. Shoes. I know. <laughs> Your friends are good. They look out for you. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys pick you up all the time? Like literally lift you off the ground? That's normal occurrence. That's normal? Yeah. Okay, I won't do it. <laughs> Not now anyway. Maybe like if we really like each other, I'll pick you up. I'll throw you up against the wall, pull your hair a little bit. Yeah. But not until we know each other a little bit better, okay? <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, you like me. <laughs> I didn't say anything. You do like me though. <laughs> I would have said goodbye earlier if I didn't. Me too. <laughs> if I didn't like myself, I would have said goodbye earlier. I wouldn't have hung out with such a cool girl. Yeah, here I, I would have been like a little masochist. Let's sit here. You want your drink? Oh, sit. See what I say. See what I say. like 6 a.m. I don't know about you. Better. I mean, as much as I want to be close to you, if we got too close, I might get turned on. I just can't. Bye, you. Tell me everything about
value but no facts. How do you feel about that? Couple things to note here. First, notice the transition of getting more physical. It's gradual, but it's very, very much there. And notice the physicality is not like trying to turn her on physical. It's just like physical intimacy, like putting her legs up over mine and just having them sitting there, that kind of stuff. Or like, um, we're not doing hand holding, but hand holding would be another example of something like this. It's just physical comfort. It's not physical escalation, it's physical comfort. The physical escalation can come once we're alone. Okay, so there's lots of physicality, but note the nature. The other thing I really want you to focus on is throughout this interaction, I'm getting her to logically agree that she likes me in various ways, right? Oh, you like me, and then getting her to actually say yes to it, right? And so that's taking the intangible emotion and turning it into a tangible action, a tangible event in the real world. Because emotions can fade, they can come and go, but events exist, right? And so um, she can't rationalize away events that have happened. Right? Also, it's quite possible that she's like feeling the emotion of liking me, but she's not cognitively aware of it. By making her call it out, I'm making her aware of it. This is how you get a girl to commit to you, and this is how you get a girl to invest and decide that she's gonna go with you for the night, as opposed to it being a struggle the whole way. Like, I don't wanna know the what you do for a living, but I do wanna know if you love me. I don't wanna know Everybody where you travel, but I wanna know the biggest adventure you've ever had. Does that make sense? Okay. Nothing, nothing that Google could tell me. Does that, that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, Close your eyes. Do you have sparkles on your eyelids? I do. <laughs> Why? Is that embarrassing? You're such a dork. Because I love them. <laughs> you're adorable. You're such a dork. But, but they're just little more time. They're not bad. See, look. It's just a little bad. How old are you? I'm... Yeah. See? I thought you were 21. I thought you were just a little, like, little strumpet. <laughs> little silly girl. Didn't even know what to do with you. <laughs> You're not? No. You're not a silly little strumpet? No. You're adorable. <laughs> You're fun to hug. Thank you. We're going to the bathroom. Do you want to come with us? Sure. Going to the bathroom. I'll go with you. You go over here, yeah? <laughs> I thought... I mean, I'm not going in the bathroom with you. Where are you in from? What? Where are you in from? I feel like all the girls are frumpy. No. She's all the time, so you don't have to be in good shape. <laughs> no, it's one of those fittest cities you can go to. One of the fittest? Yeah. Really? Yeah, they just did a poll. They did a poll. Yeah, they did. Do you believe everything you read? Well, it's true. I'm from there. <laughs> I believe that Miami and LA are the like, fittest cities because like people wear swimsuits and they have to look good. No, but like number five. Number five. Out of 52? Cities? Pretty good? Yeah. Good. You're pretty good. Thank you. It's a lie. You're terrible. I hate you. I want you to know, when we end this, you know, it won't be you, it'll be me. I still think you're a wonderful person. Thank you. I have nothing against you. Thanks. I still think you're cute. You're in great shape. You fill out your dress nicely. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you meet a great guy one day, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I can even introduce you to my single friends, but it'll hurt a little bit, because I'll probably still harbor a little bit of a crush for you. Okay. Yeah? Okay. And, um, yeah. You're funny. <laughs> I really do love your giggle. Especially when you're, like, right here up against me and you giggle, I feel it in your stomach. Yeah? I feel your little abs against mine. <laughs> Don't be trouble for me. Promise me. Promise me you won't break my heart. I won't. We've been on each other for half an hour. It's pretty hard to do that. <laughs> you have a point. Yeah. You have a very good point. Very good point. You're adorable. Thank you. So yeah, no, no broken hearts and no broken anything else. Yeah. No, uh, no arm bars and shit, okay? No. <laughs> what? She's right over there at the bar. She's literally right over there. Okay. Yeah. That's your roommate. No, I live. I moved. See, now it's okay. People are cute. I'm in a few months, though. 
good chip. Alright, um... We're gonna go to the bathroom. Yeah, that's okay. We can go to the bathroom and then come back. Okay. We'll grab a drink together and then if at the end of a drink we still like each other, I'll take you guys on an adventure. If we hate each other, okay. no adventure. Okay. Deal? Yes. You guys should come. Actually, you should come to a drink with me first and then we'll talk about my favorite place. But we're gonna have a drink first. I need more time with you. Okay. I can't take you anywhere until I know you better. Deal? Okay. Can you grab a drink with me? I'll go, yeah. Alright, let's go. So this is classic seating the pole. I'm putting out there the idea of my favorite place and where we might go, but I'm putting up obstacles where it's like, oh, I'll, I'll tell you about it later. Oh, let's grab a drink first and see if we like each other, et cetera. So I'm not setting it up as though it's a big ask for me. I'm setting it up as though it's a win for her if she does it. Also notice I'm trying to get her alone. I've had kind of some isolation of her within the group, but I've never gotten her fully away from her friends. And ideally I would like to do that because pulling the three friends is, is a pretty difficult task. Um, and if you even do pull the three friends, it, it doesn't necessarily go the best afterwards. So my idea would be pull her alone. She obviously likes me and then maybe I can just like leave with her and pull that way. If I have to bring her back with the friends, if we have to do it that way, I will. But that's not my first go to. All right. So I do want that that time in isolation to find out exactly where we stand as well. So these are very critical sort of waypoints in the set. We're gonna go grab a drink. We'll be right back. We're going right in there. You want this? <laughs> you like a gin and tonic? We'll see. You I do, I do. <laughs> I do a salon, I'm very shy. Not, not that I don't thoroughly enjoy kissing you, but... It's very unique. Huh? So it's very unique. It's I've, very never, unique. I've never had this before. I know, right? <laughs> That's why I get that all the time, I know. <laughs> tell me more about me. Okay, tell me more about you. What would you like to know? I'll tell you. Ask me any question, I'll try and answer as honestly as humanly possible. What? Well, just tell me something that you haven't told anyone in a long time or something. I'm pretty so what's she trying to do here? She's trying to logically justify for herself that she knows me. Girls will do this. When girls start to really like you, to think about going home with you, I've now made out with her, we're in isolation. She, she wants to go with me. She wants something to happen very clearly. But in her mind, it's like, oh, it's so fast. I don't know. So she's asking me for logical facts. Do these logical facts actually matter to her on some like real level? Probably not. But the fact that she knows them does. Um, I remember one time, uh, actually my first serious girlfriend ever, right before we had sex for the first time, it was on our like the second date, second time we were out, we're, we're in bed, um, she's giving me some sort of like weird resistance, even though she clearly like wants to, you know, to have sex with me. And she goes, wait, wait, what's your middle name? I tell her my middle name and then she has sex with me. Did, if I had said a different middle name, would that have made a difference? Unless it was something really fucking weird, probably not, right? But the fact that she could justify to herself that she knew that, that was part of her blueprint. She wanted to feel that extra level of comfort that she knew something. So when the girl starts opening up and trying to get you to open up, go along with it. Now it's important to keep flirting, it's important to keep the tension throughout, like keep teasing her and, and whatnot, but do let her win, right? She's trying to build a bond. The frame she's going with is a good one for you, so allow it. Let her lead towards that frame of getting to know each other and towards that frame where she can logically justify that there's something special between you and her. It's not just transactional sex. Open book, but um, I, when I was in college, I quit one credit away from graduating to go follow a dream. What dream? To be what, who I am now. A public speaker. Something like that. And uh, it was, you know, I don't recommend it to everybody, it worked out for me. You but I actually, when I did it, I actually lived in a tent behind the, the house of the CEO of a company for like a few weeks. Wow. So I had like no money. I, uh, I lived an entire like summer on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. It was really bad. I gained 35 pounds that summer. It was really bad. <laughs> so bad. I went from like, because I was a, like a college soccer player, right? Yeah. I went from 130 to 165 over the summer. It was really bad. And I'm like 165, but I actually have muscle, but then I was just like a thin, like, it was bad. I would be surprised by that. But I guess that makes sense. Being better than jelly is like, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> what was that? And then like a lot of, I went out a lot. 
So it was oh. a lot of like late night bar food. Oh, Eating yeah. at three in the morning, you know, stuff like that. I got that way in college. No, you? Yeah. You have a tight little body. I don't know what you're talking about. Give me that look. Do not give me that look. Can you give me that look? I'm totally gonna start enjoying you too much. <laughs> I have to enjoy friend. you. I have to enjoy you just enough that at the end of the night when we leave, I don't cry. <laughs> just enough for that. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Where's my? Let's go find our friends. They're over there. They're over there. When we do find them. Um, how are you with with partying a little bit more? Because it's starting to like kind of clear out here. I want to take you guys to one other place, but I don't. I only want to take you if you're comfortable. I mean, you can bring them. You should bring them in fact. Well, I'm gonna bring them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. They'll be down? Yeah. Okay. If, they're, if they're okay with it, then yes. Then yes. That's a poison pill right there. If they're okay with it, then yes. That's just a, I mean, yeah. majority rule. You're cooler than them. You constitute a majority of one. <laughs> just saying. I right, we'll hang out a little while longer anyway. Take like another 15, 20. And then, then we will bounce. Okay. Hands. Oh, Hands only. Nothing untoward, nothing too um, seductive. So that's a very important part of the set, right? You're gonna go back to the friends. I want to have as much control over the frame of that moment as I possibly can. So what do I do? I pre-frame that they're gonna go somewhere. Um, and I try and get her on board with it. And I try and get her to like sort of like supersede and convince her friends if at all possible. Then when I'm not 100% sure that's possible, I actually say, actually, I want to stay and hang out with you guys a little more first before we ask that. Because I want to go over and feel out the interaction, feel out the vibe before we go straight to it. Because if it's not on for the close, I want to be able to finesse it later. So because there are certain critical moments in the set. Right? The moment you open is critical, the moment the friends come in is critical, if guys come into the set, the moment when you're trying to pull is critical. Here, the moment where we're rejoining the friends, absolutely critical. It's a, it's a moment that could completely, like, it could just be over, or it's a moment where it could be a pull very quickly. So I want to have very, very tight control over that moment. I want that moment to happen on my terms rather than on her terms or on random terms. The drink. I know. Just promise you won't take advantage of me. I promise. If I give you, if it become incoherent, don't use me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you better not give me a hickey. I never leave marks. I'm very discreet. <laughs> okay. I've um, I shouldn't tell you this, but I've dated girls who are in other situations before, so I know how to be discreet. To date people who are already dating people? Not my preference, but I've done it. In a certain sense, it's good because, like, when the girls leave, they really leave. Like, they don't cling. But in another sense, like, there's just less intimacy. It goes both ways. Yeah. Mostly, I just like to keep it fun and not even worry about the whole, like, sexual thing. Like, right. if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Just see how it plays out. Just have a good time. That's better that way. It shouldn't be a big deal. Oh, what? No, no lips, no lips. I want you to think about it though. I want you to imagine it. <laughs> Envision it, but not do it. Yeah. Do you like being taller than me? It's kind of nice to look into your eyes. Not be looking up. You have nice eyes as well. Green. Very good. You do have a good little body. All that working out wasn't for nothing. <laughs> giving me a massage now? Huh? Are you giving me a massage now? Do you want me to stop? No. Okay. Then yes. Only a little one. Like, I don't really have a very good angle, so I can't really, like, can't do anything, like, super crazy. But, um, you know.
What's that? Can't care. You can't care? You just gotta have fun. Let it all hang out. That's what I was telling her, like, like I was telling her, I, I like this girl. She's very cute, she's very fun. But I just wanna hang out and have fun and no expectations. That's yeah, Vegas. It's true, but she kept impressing me, unfortunately. Like, at first I found out that she was feisty. Then I found out she works out five days a week. Then I found out that she was a devious little, like, tease with wit. Then I found out she could introduce me to alcohol. I just keep discovering new things about this girl. Well, this is and then I found, out, I found out that she has 16 piercings, but it's really 15 because she can't count. I thought it was 16. It's 15. It's more into literature. More into literature? What do you read? Who's your favorite author? I don't have one. Really? Do you write? I don't. Have you ever written anything? Not literature. No. Poetry. Poetry? How long do you guys know each other? Make up a poem for me. I'll make up one for you. No. Sorry. That's alright. It's okay. I'll live. I've had played soccer. I've had worse, but that wasn't that wasn't fun. That I've had worse. It's alright. It's fine. <laughs> I speak to you. And you know how big pentameter is? Oh shit. Wow, that's lucky. It like landed face up. Huh? So at this point, I don't want to say I'm killing time, but in a way I kind of am. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to like create more comfort and actually literally I am killing time in a way because the club is about to shut down. I don't usually do the whole front door room pull, or sorry, front door rule pull. Um, I, I like to pull with a little volition. I like to pull because she's chosen specifically to go with me to a place. But when it's so close to closing anyway, the idea of trying for a pull when she's going to walk out the door with you anyway is silly. So what I'm doing here basically is just building a little more intimacy, a little more comfort, and I'm killing those last five to 10 minutes before the club closes anyway. That way I can pull in a way that's not try hard in any way. Okay, so here again, just biding my time. Also, I'm monitoring the other girls in the group to make sure they're good because the, the, she's really down. Like this pull is not gonna fail because she's not down enough, but it might fail because her friends aren't down enough. So if I buy my wingmen more time, that can help as well. So this is a situation I don't have to do anything, but time is actually on my side. So I just bide my time. Also notice I'm not over escalating. I'm not trying to push it or get anything new here. I'm already in a winning position. Thing. I was gonna do at least this cheesy thing I do. Because I a lot of times I have to entertain clients uh -huh. and I have to like go out to bars and stuff like that. So if I ever get bored, uh -huh. I start speaking like Shakespearean English like I am to pentameter. Uh -huh. Like the way I speak in Romeo and Juliet. Okay. Just for like just because like if the conversation gets amusing, it's my way of staying like it's my way of keeping from getting bored basically. So are you getting bored? No. <laughs> I was gonna do it with you just to show off. Nah, give me that look, woman. I want to know what you do actually now. I never want to know that, but I want to know because I feel like I feel like you could be like a corporate terror. I feel like you'd be like this, like you look all sweet and little, and then like you just like fire people and like like have you seen like the Devil Wears Prada? You could be like that bitch, the little short version of that bitch. Are you a high-powered little girl? Okay, fair enough. Is that why you say you save the world? <laughs> really? Or yeah. Oh my god. I do. One little container at a time. One little container at a time. I, I love it. Okay, so for Venetian, we gotta go this way. We are really? Good. We are very good. You're very good. Yes. I bet you're excellent. <laughs> I'm not about to find out, but I bet you're just excellent. Am I wrong? I've never had a complaint before. Really, your, your business really never complains. No. You're lying. <laughs> you meant personally. Am I work? You meant personally. Both. <laughs> oh, really? I'm so sorry. So sorry I didn't get the door for you properly. My bad. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So much feist from these girls. You are quite the little piece of work. Why? Why? Because you just are. <laughs> Because he thought you'd be talking to me for five minutes. Yeah. Okay, so notice how on the walk home, continuing to talk, just keep the mouth running, continuing to do things that subtly, gradually increase the sexual tension, or at least don't decrease it, 
but I'm not trying to escalate, right? I'm already in a winning position. They're about to go to a location where things can actually happen. There is no reason to take risks on the way there. The idea is get them there, actually wait even once you're there, relax a little bit, chill out, so it's not such an like, obvious thing, and just let, let shit unfold, right? Your job is just to get from A to B without messing it up, right? So keep the mouth running, keep the tension you have, but don't do anything super risky. <laughs> Why? Why cheap? If you only expected me to be good for good conversation for five minutes. <laughs> it's it's, really, it's nothing crazy. personal. I've just met a lot of girls in bars in my life. <laughs> Usually they don't, you know, they don't nerd out with me. <laughs> Quite the way you do. And their British accent's a little too phony. Right. Or it'd be some like weird like Eliza do little accent or some <laughs> shit. Yes. And there you have it. So from the beginning there was a little bit of interest, but what did I have to do? I had to cultivate and nurture that interest. And I had to set up all the sort of um, events and premises and frames so that things could go smoothly. And then towards the end, I had to just continue moving my mouth and not fuck it up. This is very, very typical of the vibe, the energy, the progression in most of like a standard like cookie cutter poll that you're going to see. So really learn sort of these stages, the vibe, the, the points in this particular set because you're gonna run into them over and over and over again. This is gonna be your like bread and butter of what's gonna help you pull again and again.